The new M3 MacBook Air has sparked an unexpected journey for me. We think that Apple will have AI-enabled capabilities in its next phone. That Apple appears to be falling behind when it comes to AI. How do you respond? I don't believe you are. Not too worried. Not too worried. <laughs> Apple boldly positions this device as the pinnacle of consumer laptops for AI. A claim that really confused me at first. This is, after all, from a company that has remained notably silent on AI for years, only to now heavily emphasize these capabilities in their latest press release and even during my personal demo with Apple. The AI capabilities of the new M3 MacBook Air have yielded some shocking results, which I am eager to share with you later in the video, but does it truly live up to the claim that Apple makes of it being the world's best consumer laptop for AI. We'll also dive deep into all of the new features and advancements that come with the M3 chip to determine if this iteration continues to hold up the MacBook Air's legacy as the go-to laptop for most people. A lot to unpack today, so let's get into it. Starting off with the unboxing, it is always a joy to be unwrapping a new laptop. So I was giddy getting this thing open when I got home. What you'll find here is obviously the new MacBook Air, which I got in the midnight color, a color matched braided MagSafe cable, and an included USB-C 35 watt dual charging brick. Full disclaimer, I can't recommend a lot of you to go out and buy this brick at checkout. I would say like 99% of you should just get the 70 watt brick as that one allows you to fast charge your MacBook Air up to 50% within 30 minutes. And if you're transferring from an older MacBook like me, I think we just need to pause for a second and just appreciate how easy Apple has made the switch from one Mac to the other using their migration assistant. It transfers all of your files and data through a peer-to-peer -peer network over Wi-Fi, and it happens really fast. I transferred roughly 40 gigabytes of data from my last MacBook, and that was only gonna take around seven to 10 minutes at most. And once I was done transferring, I was really able to soak in how great the design is for the computer. Out of the box, this thing is light, portable and sleek for a 13 inch computer. For all of you who haven't purchased the M2 MacBook Air, you are in for a treat with this computer as Apple didn't change a thing with this design and they honestly didn't have to. You get a MagSafe port and two Thunderbolt ports on one side and then on the other, you get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I got mine in the midnight color and in the past, Apple actually had some issues with fingerprints with this specific color, but they recently added a new anodization seal that is supposed to create less fingerprints than before. For. It definitely is better this time around and I feel more comfortable recommending this midnight color, but you will still experience some fingerprints that just comes with the territory of dark colored devices. So you'll have to clean it every now and then. We're getting the same great magic keyboard that is very comfortable to type on, a reliable fingerprint reader that has been in this MacBook for a few generations now, and the same FaceTime HD camera and microphones which you guys can see and hear right now directly from the M3 MacBook Air. If you haven't bought a new MacBook in the last three to five years, you are going to love these speakers as they support Dolby Atmos and spatial audio, and they sound incredible. And for the small few of us that have Wi-Fi 6E in your home, it's supported in this computer now, so you can get really fast speeds wirelessly to the MacBook Air. Again, speaking to the folks who haven't bought a new Mac in a while, the display on this is really, really good. It's a liquid retina display that goes up to 500 nits of brightness and it looks great. No one, and I mean none of you, are gonna be disappointed with how crisp, sharp, and detailed things look on this computer. Something new this year, thanks to the M3 chip, which we will talk about very soon, is that the MacBook Air can now support up to two external displays as long as the laptop is closed. I saw some stuff on Twitter about people saying that this is a little lame, that the laptop needs to be collapsed, but I honestly don't think that that's a big deal. I feel like the people who are in the market for a MacBook Air will be more than satisfied to have two displays available to them and not need a third one from their computer. And if that's you, like there's already a MacBook Pro for you to be able to buy. Okay, now that we got all the formalities out of the way about what makes up the MacBook Air, let's dive deep into the performance of this computer with the M3 chip, as I do have some really surprising conclusions and how it all ties into AI and Apple entering the race for AI this year, which 
is really interesting and I really wanna break that down for you in this video. In terms of specs, Apple sent me an M3 MacBook Air with an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU with a 16 core neural engine that is actually more efficient and a huge contributor to the AI related task performance that we'll get into soon, paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD. A little bit of a hot take for me right now is I don't think most of you should buy the base MacBook Air with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD. I know the upgrades for RAM and storage are gonna cost you a few hundred dollars, but in the long run, you get way more out of the computer if you do get that stuff. I just don't think that eight gigabytes of RAM is enough these days, unless you're doing only the most basic, basic things on your computer, emails, web browsing, like super simple business tasks, and maybe the occasional video edit or photo edit. But if you have any sort of creative aspirations or you just wanna get more out of your computer in the next five years, I wouldn't skimp on RAM and storage upgrades. And I'm gonna show you exactly why. These upgrades paired with the M3 chip have resulted with a MacBook Air that is really snappy. I literally had in my review notes, this computer is unusually quicker than I expected. Opening applications and multitasking between them honestly feels so smooth, it's shocking. I can honestly say that I wouldn't have too much of a problem creating content on my channel on this computer in applications like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Lightroom, Gling AI, Topaz, and, and that was something that I did not expect to think going into this review. Of course, I need to clarify, I'm not saying that this computer is equal to the beast of something like the M3 Max, which is what I currently use for my workflows, but it's doable. And, and that's important to mention, given that this laptop is fanless and incredibly thin and you're still getting so much performance out of it. Apple has officially discontinued the old school MacBook Air, so RIP to that gem. It will officially go down as the computer that started the craze over the M series computers from Apple. Interestingly enough, alongside this announcement, Apple has also decided to reduce the price of the older M2 MacBook Air by $100 and only sell it in the current 13 inch size while reserving the 15 inch model only for the new M3 chip. I know a big question that people have is whether or not they should just save the $100 and buy the M2 instead. I personally feel for $100 more, you are getting value. You're getting a more efficient and noticeably snappier chip from my experience. So I think it's worth the difference, but for the most budget conscious folk watching, M2 will be just fine for a lot of you. But let's now get to the elephant in the room. So according to Apple's press release for this computer, they are claiming that the M3 MacBook Air is the world's best consumer laptop for AI. What does that even mean? Well, according to Apple, the M3 has a faster and more efficient 16 core neural engine that provides big gains to boost on-device machine learning, which translates to faster AI performance across the board on the computer. For my testing on a small scale, things like dictation, speech to text, and native language processing is really powerful on this computer. I actually spoke out most of my review out loud and my Mac typed it into a script for this video and it actually did a really good job. But the shocking thing is that this performance that I'm seeing is translating really well to even local creative and productivity AI tasks that actually leverage the neural engine. For example, it took my M1 Pro MacBook Pro with the same 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD, 49 seconds to denoise an image in Topaz Photo AI and only 10 seconds on my M3 MacBook Air. It took my M1 Pro seven minutes and 50 seconds to use the CapCut AutoCut AI tool to remove the background from the subject over a 20 minute 4K clip, while it only took my M3 MacBook Air about five minutes and nine seconds. Pixelmator Pro has an AI background removal software and it took about six seconds on the M1 Pro chip in just about four seconds on M3. So across the board, the M3 in a small and big way is actually faster than a two generation old M1 Pro chip when it comes to AI related tasks. And we also need to remember that that's not me even comparing like apples to apples. Like these chips are not even in the same chip family. It would be more fair to actually compare the M3 to the M1, which I didn't actually do for this video. I want us to all think about something for a second. 
The M series ships have been crushing it for the last three years in terms of performance. And now that we're getting a neural engine that is actually more capable at AI related task processing in the M3 chip, it isn't really a far cry for Apple to say that this is the best out there for a consumer laptop when it comes to AI tasks. Obviously, I can't test this theory because I don't actually have another Windows laptop to compare it to for local AI processing tasks. But let me just pose a question to you that, that actually might just bring us to a quicker conclusion. I'm having a really hard time thinking about and trying to find an ultra thin Windows computer with 18 hours of battery life with impressive performance across productivity and creative tasks paired with a neural engine that can speed up local AI tasks. I just don't know if that exists on the Windows side of things. Like, let me know what you'd recommend below. Honestly, maybe I'm the one that needs to be enlightened here. But there's even more to this story when we get to the big picture. That's when all of this gets more exciting and bigger than M3 and MacBook Air. Apple has been rumored for a long time to be developing their own generative AI software and making their own big advancements, but we haven't heard anything yet because that's the Apple way. We don't really hear anything until it's basically ready and perfected. We've seen Apple's competitors talk about AI for a long time now, with the likes of the Samsungs of the world going all in with Galaxy AI and their S24 Ultra smartphone, or Google releasing a ton of AI-related features for their products. Microsoft has been making a serious push in AI as well. Nvidia is emerging as a huge leader in AI technology in the last few years. And for the average Joe watching this video, all of this AI stuff made it on their radar when chat GPT took over their lives in mainstream media not too long ago. So there's clear value to AI in our lives. Companies would be chasing it otherwise, but it was always interesting to see Apple be so quiet about it for so long until the last few months with Apple mentioning AI so many times in their press release. And Tim Cook himself going on record saying that Apple will break new ground in AI this year. So I think we can be very confident that we'll see some Thing this year, probably at WWDC 2024, where Apple is going to unveil their Siri GPT equivalent. And as the patterns of history have shown us, when Apple enters in the race for something, that's when the world and other companies take notice and take it more seriously. And the competition rises for our attention and money. And us consumers, we always win in the end, as amazing products always come out of highly competitive business environments. But let's switch gears to another M3 computer, the final boss, the M3 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro. It's the most powerful laptop Apple has ever made, and I came to some surprising conclusions that I shared in my latest review of it, so click right here to watch it now. 